Hey, and welcome to my journey. Today's video is a meal prep video. This is for my soft foods phase. I will be leaving the pureed department on Monday. Today and tomorrow is my last two days for pureed foods. And I'm so excited to have something I don't have to run through the food processor first. So that's what these foods are for. These foods are for me to start eating on Monday. So let me tell you what I'm making. I made a ricotta bake. It is, um, I don't know, probably a million recipes <laughs> for it. Everybody's got their own. You know, you know those recipes. I think this one, I forgot to write down the name of the book, but I, when I handwrite it in my recipes to try, then it came out of a book or a magazine. No. Yeah. Well, it depends on if it's a magazine that I, um, sometimes I cut stuff out of magazines. Sometimes I write stuff out of it. This is probably out of a book. I'm thinking it was probably out of the bariatric book that Cheryl sent me. Anyway, it is a, a common dish in the bariatric community. And I am so glad I tried it because even if I was not on any kind of bariatric diet, I would eat this dish. It would be a perfect um, meatless dish. If you're trying to go meatless a day, a week, or something like that, it's perfect for that. It's perfect for two people because it's only made in a one-quart casserole dish. So it doesn't make a whole lot. Now, for me, it made a lot because I have it down in two-ounce servings. So I have enough for this week and then some for the freezer, which you'll see at the end. And then I made some hamburger meat, some 93% ground beef. And I doctored it up a little bit so it wouldn't just be plain. I got some of that. It's um, good protein. Since they push your protein, you've got to eat your protein. There's protein in the ricotta bake. There's protein in the hamburger. Now, I have some carrots to go with it when I eat my hamburger. As long as I eat my hamburger first, then I have room for the carrots, then we're good to go. Don't eat your carrots first because you've got to make sure the protein gets in there in case you get full. Um, but there are extra carrots. I just have them for a snack. Um, as long as I know I'm getting my protein in during the day, they're fine for a snack. And then I have some cottage cheese that I just divided out into half a cup um, containers. If I eat cottage cheese today or tomorrow, I have to puree it in the food processor. And I did that yesterday. Listen, if y'all see two videos from me today, that's because I was so dog tired last night. I did not have the energy to edit a video. So when I got up this morning before 2 o'clock, it was before 2 o'clock, I'm telling you. Then I went on back there and edited it and got it put up. And it took forever for YouTube to process it and then check it. That's why it didn't go up to like 5 o'clock. And I worked on it. it take no time to edit it. So anyway, YouTube gets that way. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. So then that's the cottage cheese. So it was good. I was going to tell you. Um, with some of that Trivia brown sugar substitute in it. Ooh, it was good. I would do that again. And then finally, my chocolate protein pudding. It is just instant chocolate fudge pudding with some protein powder in it. That just bumps it up. You get protein from the milk, and you get protein from the protein powder. So everything, with the exception of the carrots I, I made this morning, has protein in it. So along with that, and my protein drinks, I think I'm good to go. So, that is what I'm making this week. If you are interested in seeing it, stick around because it is coming up next. The first thing we're going to do today is make our ricotta bake. I have one egg that I've already beaten, and I need 8 ounces of ricotta cheese. This is a 15 ounce container, so I'm just going to put my bowl right on here. Tear it out, and we're going to scoop in eight ounces. Look at there. We're going to get it. Principle. <laughs> so there is our eight ounces of ricotta cheese so we can move our scales we don't need that anymore let's kind of mix this in our egg a little bit there, that looks pretty good 
Now we need a half a cup of grated Parmesan cheese. And I'm just using the, the shaky kind right out of the... Well, there used to be a can. Remember that? Remember when they used to be in the can? And then a teaspoon of Italian seasoning. And some salt and pepper to taste. Probably don't need too much. Okay, we're going to stir this together. Now I have a sprayed one quart baking dish. Next, we need to top it with a half a cup of spaghetti sauce, and this is what we like. This ragu, um, no sugar added. The ragu simply is really good. A half a cup of that. Spread that around. And then a half a cup of mozzarella cheese. And this is the part skim. This goes in a 450 degree oven for 20 to 25 minutes. So I will see you back then. Here is our ricotta bake. I baked it for 20 minutes. I didn't want to go anymore. It's starting to get brown around the edges. I don't want to get it crunchy because this is in the soft foods um, phase. So I don't want anything crunchy on it. Now I'm going to have to let this cool, I guess, pretty close to completely because I imagine it's still, see that, it's a little jiggly. This is the first time I've made it, but I'm just assuming um, it needs to have time to set up and to um, kind of get some body to it. So we'll be back to that. You can hear my meat in the background. I'm kind of doing some double duty here. As luck would have it, I have five of my little containers left, and that's how many of these I need, Monday through Friday. And I'm going to see. Oh, it did set up. Set up nicely. There's a little bit of texture to that cheese, but they want you to have it melted, and it is definitely melted. So I think maybe I'll be fine. Okay, I have almost pulled out all the liquid, and I'm going to add some more. This is a half a cup of beef broth. I just did some um, bouillon and some Worcestershire sauce. I said I want this meat flavorful, and if it's not, I can add some G. Hughes sugar-free steak sauce to it when I eat it. So now I want to cook this, continue chopping it down in this liquid until all the liquid has uh, uh, um, evaporated. This hamburger has cut, I don't know if you can see through the steam. It's a nice, fine um, mince, so I'm going to set this aside. I want it to cool before I um, package it up. Guess what? I didn't even turn my camera on. Yeah. <laughs> Are we surprised? I am portioning out my hamburger. I have five of my little cups to eat this week, Monday through Friday, and the rest is going in these little condiment cups that I got from the Dollar Tree to go in the freezer, so that's what I'm doing now. Okay, for these carrots, I balled them within an inch of their life. But I want them soft because this is a soft foods diet. Now, I'm just going to portion. I'm not going to freeze them. I'm just going to portion these until they're used up. Because I know I will be getting my protein in for the day. And this would just be a guilt-free snack.
Now we're going to make our chocolate protein pudding. And it's on our list um, of soft foods is some pudding. So what I have in here is two cups of cold milk. I'm using skim because that's what we drink. And I'm going to add a half a scoop of Isopure unflavored protein powder. I think one scoop. I don't know. We'll see. Let's whisk it in. And then I want to use one box of, this is my favorite, the chocolate fudge. It's just better than the regular chocolate, in my opinion. See, there's nothing earth shattering about this. Just make some pudding of your choice, instant, sugar free. Unless you don't go sugar free, then use regular. And put some, you could put vanilla in here if you wanted to. I, I have some vanilla, um, but I thought it might, um, I just thought it might compete too much with the chocolate. Now you could add a full scoop if you wanted to. I think this half a scoop is going to be enough because it, it doesn't always, I mean it, it dissolves, but it kind of doesn't. You can see on the sides, that's not pudding. I know that's not pudding. You can see the texture, but to have some pudding, I'll do what I got to do. So I'm going to whisk this a uh, couple minutes and then let it sit to um, thicken. The next thing I'm going to do is portion out my cottage cheese in half cup servings. Okay, so let's take a look at what we did today. Didn't take me too long at all. I have the ricotta bake. It made 12 um, two ounce servings and that is five grams of carb, not carbs, protein each. And these are the ones for the freezer. I just put RB for ricotta bake so I know what it was. And then here's my little carrots. Uh, negligible protein if there's any. I didn't even look it up. Here is my 93% hamburger. Two ounce servings. I just put 93 on the ones for the freezer. That way I would know it's hamburger and then I would know what um, percentage of fat it was. And then here is my cottage cheese. Let's see. This is 13 grams of protein. I did not look up the cottage cheese how many grams of protein to tell you that. But there's some in it. <laughs> And now, if I eat any of these before Monday, I have to puree it. Monday, I can start eating it as it is. But Saturday and Sunday, today and tomorrow, if I eat any, I have to puree it in the food processor. And then my protein pudding. And these have eight ounces of protein in it. And that's a serving size suggested in the paperwork. So, um, I don't know if it's because it's just so smooth. It doesn't really bulk up your stomach when you eat it. I'm not really sure about the... Um, premise behind that but it is a suggestion serving so that is what i'm having this week to keep me on track i hope you are having a good weekend and i hope you enjoyed this video and i will see you in my next one